Hey, welcome to Blind Owl Outdoors. It's a nice Tuesday morning, about 10.35. Clouds are starting to build up already. There was a slight sprinkle for about 35 seconds this morning. I heard it tinkling on the tin roof. Real light. Not even enough to drip off the roof. Haven't had any rain for quite a while now. Maybe we're about due for a nice, how about a nice 20 inch here? That's what we're due for, that's what we need. I was talking to a friend today about uh, rain, water, and gutters and stuff. And uh, I've always been amazed at how much water you can actually collect off of a roof. He was telling me off his roof that he could fill the fill a I think it's a 450 liter, one of those blue tanks, just next size smaller than the one we have. And just one rain, just one light little 20, 30 minute rain will fill that right up. That's a lot of water. I'd like to get something set up like Philip has and uh, put in like say a uh, 10 by 20 pool or something like that about five or six foot deep will be nice tile it all up real nice and make that as our, our project one year and uh, get it all screened in so I don't have any problem with bugs and frogs and stuff getting in it and then it also can be like a swimming pool if we wanted to use it for that but mostly it'd be used for a water storage for the dry season and again, a, a tank like that will only last, you know, a small amount of time. I think Philip, with his, he uses his pool for, in the off season, I think he uses it for the restrooms and maybe for washing dishes and stuff like that, washing clothes maybe. Uh, not a whole lot of different things, but his, his last, his last, uh, I think a couple months, if he, if he works on it real, you know, real easy. I need to get up to Phillips house too. He's been a been a bunch of changes up there. Beth has been doing a bunch of different landscaping. She last time I was up there she cleared out a whole bunch of stuff. And I heard that it's filled in. I, I ran into we ran into Philip at a birthday party the other day and and uh, I didn't run into him, we met him there. And uh, he told me some of the differences in the yard and uh, I just haven't had a chance to get up there. Kind of been avoiding that end of, end of Burgess. So much scum in that area. It's turned into a sleazy, slimy area. Yeah, there's been a big uptake of of the shabu. Abuses, occurrences have been coming back again now. Prostitution, adultery, all kinds of stuff. Just a shame. Our beautiful little barangay slipping into the modern age, I guess. And it's only going to get worse. I could get better, I guess. Every once in a while, the military will step into an area and clean it up. They did that up here. I'm going by a road here to a place called Danau. And when I first got here in 2004, Danau uh, was right. I think right before they opened that Denau Nature Park, Adventure Park or whatever it is. But there was reports there, there, there was a paved road that only went about two kilometers. And then after that, it was a dirt road that went for 30, a little over 30 kilometers to Denau. And uh, there was all kinds of reports of uh, 
what are they called? NPA? The rebels? There was all kinds of reports of the rebels up that way. But uh, I think the big problem, I don't think they were the problem at all. I think they're actually very peaceful people. They have a you know ideal system that they're trying to go by, and uh, I think you should respect them for what they are. But uh, I think people were taking advantage of the rumors that they were up there, and there would be uh, roadblocks blocking your way on the on the road, especially at night, and uh, strong arm tactics of people, you know, robbing cars and. You know, taking your phones and taking everything you have and then letting you go. Not, not killing you or, or kidnapping you or anything, just stealing from you. And uh, I can't remember the date or anything, what year it was, but the military sent in uh, a group of scouts to the area. And again, I have no idea how long they were there. But they, they did their, their thing, and uh, a little later on, they sent a squad in, and I believe it was at night, and uh, they killed a, a group or a couple groups of people, and there was never any problems ever again. Uh, we had the same problem in Burgess when I first got here. I think it was before we moved into our house. There was a uh, pretty good sized squad of men, about 15 or 20 guys, and they were staying down by the highway in someone's yard during the day. And they go out on patrols at night. And uh, there's warnings. <sighs> Excuse me. There's warnings in the Brungay that said if you're out after seven o'clock without a flashlight, you'll be shot. So either have a flashlight or don't go out. And uh, that again, that was because of rumors of rebels and stuff between Burgess and Rizal, and up past Rizal. Rizal is another Brungay past us farther up in the hills, four kilometers up in the hill. And Burgess goes Burgess goes about two kilometers up. And one night they shot a girl and a guy. I think they were about 18 or 19 years old, maybe 17 years old, I'm not sure. But they claimed they were rebels. And then a little after that, they left. We never heard of them again. I never heard any anybody complaints. There was a there was a time though, uh, before the military got there, there was several times that I heard machine gun fire, like M16s, uh, armor lights. Uh, I heard those many times up in the the hills up beyond where we lived at, in uh, the in-laws' house. And it's pretty un. Uh, mistakeable sound, so can't be firecrackers or anything like that. It's got it's got its own definite ring to it. I guarantee you that. An AK-47 sounds totally different than an M-16. But some of us would know that. Some of us wouldn't. All right, this is getting ridiculous here. 15K on a national highway. A little bit of new construction here. They got them all cemented in already though. It's pretty nice. I heard at one time there's a huge camp of the rebels up by Carmen, up in the mountains. But a few times I was through there, I've never heard or saw anything. But again, you know, why would you? They look just like everybody else. I don't think they're walking around in some 
subversive uniforms or anything like that. Now the terrorists that were here a while back in Inabunga, now they were all going around with hoods with a, like a bakalava or whatever you want to call them on their heads. Black. When they're out in public, kind of hiding, but uh, hiding but not sticking out at the same time. There was a report one day of two guys with the head covers on, the face covers on, and both had uh, very long black nylon bags. And they got off a bus and they walked right off the road and headed straight down to the fish ponds and the coast, down in the bamboo area down below our house. And uh, several days after that, I heard a bunch of explosions down there that sound just like military charges going off. You know, boom, 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 like a, a whole line of them. Uh, I reported it and stuff, and the police went down there and checked it out, and they said that they didn't see anything, but again, whether they did check it out or not, I have no idea. And it was shortly after that that the Army and the PNP reported that all the insurgents, whatever you want to call them, were eliminated. They chased them from Inabunga all the way over to Ubai across the island on foot through the woods and fields and hills and stuff. Killed a bunch of them on the way and got the rest of them at the, in Ubai. And a couple of them got killed down by Laoon, uh, some big leader, some big leader's grandson got killed down by Laoon, I think. But we haven't really heard much about that stuff. I think they're really keeping the anything terrorism or anything that's being kept completely out of the news uh, because of the tourism. They're trying to uh, make the island of the whole the new Boracay or whatever the place is called because that's just turned pretty bad up there. Uh, that's why everything's being changed here. They're putting millions of dollars, not pesos, millions of dollars into this island's infrastructure, the roads, bridges, uh, the piers have been all redone. I, 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 you didn't see the video yet, but I did a video on, you may, maybe the time this comes, you might see it on a, a new pier in Kalapi, or Claren, I mean, Claren. And uh, that was quite a project. But again, it's just to shuttle people from Cebu over to here. And Tubigan's pier has been redone. Hatafi's pier has been redone. Talibun's pier has been completely redone. Ubai's pier, I think Ubai, they put two piers in up there in different places. They've been completely redone. One of them is brand new. Uh, we have a new island. An it's supposed to be an international airport in Pangalao, but I heard that it's... Someone says it's too short for an international plane. The runway is. By not very far either, but, but it's, it's too short. Too short by 800 feet, maybe, something like that. Which I guess is pretty far. So you cannot take an international flight into the hole. Not yet. You have to go to Cebu or Manila. Probably Davao, maybe. I don't know yet. Dumaguete, maybe. Yeah, the van doing 30. Jeez. Pretty nice country here. There's a fancy machine, look at that.
fixing the market up here in Buena Vista. Alright, that's all I have for now. Please click like and subscribe. You can contact us anytime at blindowloutdoors at gmail.com. Thank you very much and have a great day. You know I am.